Foul Trouble is on the go again because I'm in Minneapolis. I just watched the Timberwolves beat a team by 48 points. Um, Patrick is enjoying his sons playing well, but let's get into Foul Trouble. Don't jinx it, man. Don't jinx it. I'll try not to. Today we're going to be talking about the teams that are going to be on the hot seat if they have an earlier than expected playoff exit or just an early playoff exit because I think we're going to talk about uh, a team near and dear to you uh, in this discussion. You're damn right we will. But first, our emergency podcast about Malachi Flynn's 50-point effort for the Detroit Pistons tonight. I was really confused when I saw Malachi Flynn had 50 points because I was like, I'm at the Raptors game and I haven't seen him play, question mark, because I know he was on the (laughs) Raptors for like two, three years. Um, Patrick, uh, we talked about the summer tax, but... Patrick and I, we did a couple test podcasts before we actually launched Foul Trouble. And in one of them, we did our our predicting the end of season power rankings. And I boldly picked the Raptors to be 29th. And I I just got to say, man, I want to just the Raptors. They're bad. They're bad. They are very bad. I see. They're super bad. And you absolutely nailed the fact that they were going to bail on Pascal and OG, which I I thought Masai was just going to hold them until they disintegrated out of his cold. Another hands. team that uh, I'm going to drop in the power rank is the Milwaukee Bucks. You know, I watched them lose to the Wizards yesterday. OK, tell me what was that like from in the arena? The Milwaukee Bucks just fumbling the bag against so, the Wizards. So, very pro Milwaukee crowd in Washington. I'm not going to lie. I would say it was 60-40 Bucks fans to Wizards fans. A lot of Giannis jerseys. Every time Giannis scored, it was really loud in there. Um, and the Wizards are up by like 8 at halftime, but it's kind of like a low-scoring game, so 8 feels more like 16. And I'm, I turned to my friend who's a, who's, you know, he's a local, not really a Wizards fan, but he's a local. I'm like, I feel like the Wizards are going to win. And he's like, no, nah, we're going to blow it. And then the Wizards are up going into the fourth. And I'm like, I feel like the Wizards are going to win because when Damian Lillard's not playing for Milwaukee, they're just kind of a wreck on offense. And it's crazy because Giannis honestly played a they're really, just... really good game himself. Yeah, he had like 35 and 15. But yeah, I mean, without Dame, apparently they just can't be like not the worst team in the absolute league yeah i'm not sure i don't know milwaukee they lost tonight to memphis too right or did they end up oh my god yes they did yeah they were leading most of the game and then they just let memphis back in and i guess gg jackson watching Giannis prep pregame just unleashed him um in a in a new way but um, yeah, just these these end of season races are. Do we want to start in Milwaukee as a team that potentially is on the hot seat if this off if the if you know if they lose a two seven to Philly or they lose a two seven to Miami? Do you think Milwaukee is a hot seat team? They've had a weird season with the coaching. They fired Adrian Griffin after a disappointing start. I think now that I believe they're fourteen and sixteen or fourteen and fifteen with Doc Rivers on the season. So. I mean, it seems like they'd been picking it up with Doc after a slow start, but now they're kind of back to being this rudderless horse. Obviously, Dame didn't play the last two games, but like, I don't know, man. I kind of feels like this team is almost a little too reliant on Dame in a weird way, you know, for how much talent is on the roster. And I, I guess, what do you think happens if Milwaukee loses to an Embiid-led Sixers team here in round one? Yeah, so I mean, I um I kind of looked at each one of these teams for hot seat rankings in in three different areas. I looked at their coaching situation, their front office situation, and then their star players. Obviously, they have both Giannis and Dame locked up for a good amount of time, and I say that in saying it is kind of the model nowadays to grab your super super max bag, Bradley Beal style. And then after that, you can kind of request out whenever Damian Lillard, who is on their team, just did that exact same thing. I had kind of forgotten that Doc did not only sign for the rest of the season, but for four years. So I kind of doubt that they're going to fire Doc. But I think John Horse, their GM, is definitely um, a candidate if there's to be an upset. to be out of town pretty soon. And then I think Giannis honestly is a flight risk at any time if if they are to uh, 
fail to even make the the conference finals. Yeah, I think I wouldn't worry about Giannis for next year. I guess maybe what they're gonna do is it's weird. There, there's I think they're a team that in actually in this Wizards game too is just you know Brooke Lopez and the drop coverage. It just seems like it's something that good NBA offenses are good at beating these really deep drop coverage bigs. Um, hopefully that's not the case in Minnesota, Max, but. Like, I don't know. In that Wizards game, I kind of see it too. And it, it that's why the Heat give them so many problems is they're bringing Brooke Lopez so high up and he's a little bit more slow-footed with their designated handoff game. And it's just like, I don't know. Have they solved their structural issues against a team like Miami? Are they going to be able to handle some of these teams? Like, I th- I would pick them against the Heat given the way the season's gone. But yeah, if they bow out early, I'm almost wondering, do you think they maybe switch out Lopez and Middleton to kind of keep Giannis and Dame? Because one thing I noticed in person with Middleton, it's like, He's so good at getting his own shot in the mid-range, you know, but he's a little slow. You know, he's not this dynamic. You know what I mean? It's it's kind of like when Chris has the ball, he can make the swing pass. He can make those kind of basic kickout passes, but he's not going to, like, you know, create a dynamic, like, blow by his defender. Now Giannis is cutting, you know, behind him. You know what I mean? He doesn't really create those more dynamic passing opportunities because he's a more stiff but it's still efficient, you know, scorer. Yeah, I mean, I, I kind of feel like th- they are a team that has had a lot of injury problems throughout this season. So it, it kind of depends on how they were to go out. Like, I, I think you can almost talk yourself into if you're a Bucks fan and they go out semi early, if they're able to put up a fight, you can talk yourself into like, hey, like one more year, let's gel. I mean, I think... For a lot of the teams we talk about, it's going to be kind of the Rudy Gobert in year one on the Timberwolves model of like it was we're, we're incorporating a lot of talent together and it needs time to mesh. But um, yeah, I I don't know. It's it, I, I am not as optimistic as I was right after the uh, the all star break with the Bucks and. They've got Doc Rivers, a guy who has not reached the, a conference finals since 2012 with the Celtics. Like literally, Kevin Garnett was still on the Celtics. The Nets trade had not happened. That's a long time ago. And um, yeah, it's a uh, scary times. I had uh, overall, I had the Bucks sixth on my like hot seat rankings. But for a team that's so locked in, I think that's a, like a pretty, pretty high place to have yeah. them. Okay. Who is, uh, let's stay in the East. Cause I'm, I don't really feel like there's a lot of other hot seats in the East other than it's, it's just so hard to envision the Celtics team losing in the first round, but considering their draw could be the Sixers or the Heat, probably not the Heat at this point. Honestly, I kind of doubt it's going to be the Sixers either. So it's almost like an, it's not even. I'm assuming this are the Celtics even on your list just be, or is it just they're not going to lose? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think that they're going to lose. I yeah. would be shocked. And I, I made the list envisioning like what if lost, each team yeah, okay. lost early. Um, so I had them at five, but I mean, it would just be such a devastating loss at this point that the Celtics, after today's win, they have an 11.72 point differential. That is good enough to be the fourth best point differential of all time. And it would be the worst or the best point differential ever not to win the championship. The only three better are the 71-72 Lakers, who were like an absolutely dominant team. The uh, Bucks in 70-71, which were super dominant, and then the 95-96 Bulls. So, I mean, it would be a, a complete Yeah, disaster. no, I, I mean, if the Celtics were to lose, though, let's just say, you know, a Game 7 Heat series where Jimmy Butler goes absolutely ballistic again, what do you think that hot seat looks like? I imagine it means Missoula's gone. Yeah, Missoula's got to be Tatum gone at stays. that point. I think Brad Steve- Stevens is probably yeah, safe. Yeah, Stevens has to be safer after the roster he's put together. I don't know. It's so it's like it's almost impossible to envision them losing in the first round, especially now that the Heat have moved into the six and the Sixers are looking a lot. You know, they have a bead back. They just beat the Thunder, granted, not without some of their star players, but still. So if the if the Celtics lost in the second round, would you keep Missoula no, around? Fire Missoula. Yeah, I'm with you on that. 
I'm with you on that. Well, I only had one other Eastern Conference team in my top six of the rankings uh, of hot seat like potential. Can you guess which it's team Cleveland, that would right? be? So it's Cleveland's Cleveland. a weird hot it's seat, Cleveland. though, because Cleveland is on the hot seat win or lose. That's because true. Donovan Mitchell That's was true. asked about. You um, know, I just feel like on every level, like they they could be their guys could be on the hot yeah, seat. Yeah, I mean, I'm fully with you. I think with Cleveland, for them, I think given the way the East is structured, you know, they're gonna have the Bucks in round two. Like the Bucks are kind of a mess. They might not even have the Bucks in round two. They might have the Sixers, in which case, like I think if the Sixers are in round two, then I'm gonna pick them over Cleveland for sure. Um, or maybe they have the Heat. But yeah, I don't know. I think for me, like if Cleveland gets to the conference finals, it's a huge success. But if Donovan Mitchell's saying, like, I'm not gonna talk about an extension, like you kind of have to blow it up no matter what happens. So I feel like Cleveland is just I feel like they're the hottest seat team, but in a way that it's like it almost doesn't matter when they lose. Yeah, I mean, I feel like if they made it all the way to the Eastern Conference Finals, they would probably be able to keep things together. Um, and maybe if it was if they had like a really hard fought second round matchup against like the Bucks or the Celtics. But generally, like I, I think if they lost in the in the first round, Bakerstaff would probably be gone. Kobe Altman has not won a playoff series since he had LeBron on his roster. So that that could be another place. I mean, he's built this kind of star laden team that I don't think we've seen a team with four all stars that has fit more poorly together than this incarnation of the Cavs. And then the Donovan Mitchell stuff is has been played out and and talked about it yeah i mean that's the thing with this Cavs team is you could definitely see them losing in round one if the playoffs were today to be playing miami and like i know three versus six seems like a huge matchup deficit it's like a three game difference in the standings they're pretty they're pretty similar teams and the heat are on a hot streak and the Cavs are slumping even though they just got mitchell back yeah and and mitchell really hasn't been the guy that we've seen all year since he's got back from that that knee injury and he's got the broken nose which is just, I, I feel like we've seen so many people break their nose. I feel like I'd pick Miami to win that series right now. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I think Cleveland's going to blow it, it up. I guess just, the question is, is there a world where Mitchell will stay if they're like, hey, we'll, we'll trade one of the bigs and we'll trade Garland to completely retool the team around you? Or is it just going to be, no, we're going to trade Mitchell. We're probably going to trade whichever big uh, Garland would prefer to, you know, not keep and then. I mean, I would pitch that to Mitchell. It, of any of those guys, Mitchell's the guy that I'd want to build around if I'm the Cavs. A, a Cavs team that still does not have control of their draft um, in, I think, the next four years. So that's definitely something to keep in mind. And also, there's not really perfect fits for Mitchell out there. Like, the not Knicks fit is not... W- not a great one. I mean, I, I could still maybe see the I know Knicks that doing people it. People are saying the Heat, but, but I just don't um, know. That, then it's like Pelicans the trade packages. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're definitely if they're trading Mitchell to the Heat, I think they're going to get pennies on the dollar dollar for yeah. Mitchell. Yeah, I mean, Pels though. I mean, I, I guess it's one of those things where it's like I don't know though because you're going to have to trade CJ in that, and like I don't want to give up Donovan Mitchell and get CJ and maybe another asset. Well, or Ingram. Yeah, I think Ingram's like an interesting fit for the Cavs. Yeah. He, he's the kind of star that they don't have currently. That's true. Yeah, I guess an Ingram center trade could be kind of fun for both teams. But I just you got to figure out that McCollum Mitchell backcourt then. So I feel like for the Pels, I mean, it's moving parts, but I guess that's probably where you're going to go. Look, then. Yeah. What about Lakers? I don't know what the Lakers give up. Realistically, it's like a D'Lo Austin Reeves kind of thing. Yeah, D'Lo, Reeves. Throwing Ru- Rui. It's just tough because I feel like if you're Cleveland, then you got Garland, D'Lo, Reeves, which is better than Garland and no Mitchell. But you're like, I don't know. That's just such a weird defensive grouping. Yeah, I mean, it already doesn't work right now. But um, it's tough. I feel like it's going to be some team we don't see coming. Maybe it'll be one of these bottom teams. Maybe it'll be the Spurs. Yeah. Oh, my God. That would be freaking amazing. I would love that so much. Um, but yeah, weirdly, kind of just like how the Cavs traded for Donovan Mitchell and nobody saw it coming. I think you're you totally hit the nail on the head that that's probably what it would be like. 
which is a completely surprise. Yeah. All right, should we bounce to the West? Because I think most of the teams that I think of as hot seat teams are here in the West. Yes, yes. Let's go to the West. I mean, I, I think there are Patrick, three can... that kind of stand above the rest. Are those three the Clippers? Yes. That's the my Suns. number one of any team in the league. Suns. I don't know where you're going between the Lakers and the Warriors. I've got the Lakers. Um, okay. And that's just because of the... I just feel like the Warriors, it's it's kind of hard to blow up. You know, they, they just signed Steve Kerr to this long-ass extension. They just changed their GM to Mike Dunleavy Jr. last year. So that's probably not going to change. Well, and then you've got Draymond locked up and it's like you can move him. But I don't know, like, what realistically you're going to get for Draymond at this point. So what does a Warriors blow up look like? It looks like not bringing Clay back, right? And it looks like maybe trading a Kaminga and a Moody because it's kind of like right now the Warriors are 10, which means theoretically if the Warriors were to even make the playoffs. So let's just treat it as either they lose in the play in or they lose as the eighth seed to the one seeded either Timberwolves, Nuggets, or Thunder. I think all of us like those three teams over the Warriors in a seven-game series. Yeah, um, yeah definitely. Yeah, I don't know. I, I think they could blow that team up in a way that we don't expect because when they're 10 this year, and it's like they've had injuries, but so has kind of every single, like, sneakily. Like, are, have they really been that dramatically more injured than the Phoenix Suns? I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I wouldn't say no, so. I, they they haven't. I wouldn't say. So. Yeah, so I don't know. Like, it's just one of those, like, I just think this is the end of the dynasty. So either they're going to have to really shake it up around Steph and Draymond, or, I mean, maybe they do the unthinkable. I don't know. Oh, my gosh. Because, like, yeah, th- I mean, like, I think the worst thing they could do is just not do anything and run this team back. And all of a sudden, next year, Memphis and Houston are way better. And all of a sudden, it's like, oh, we're not even fighting for 10 anymore. We're fighting for 11. Yeah, I mean, if if you can, I I think Draymond has shown enough that it's like maybe you try to find a really, really big money guy that you can trade like a Draymond and Wiggins package for and just like totally transform some team's defense. But um, who makes enough money for something like that? It's tough to say. You want Bradley Beal? Um, it. It's 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 tough there, LeBron. Yeah, I, they're in a <laughs> they're in a really tough spot. I mean, yeah, I mean it's weird to say that there's a tenth seed is on the hot seat, <laughs> but this is the life cycle of their team, right? Because they won their championship a decade ago. You know, this is the tail end of the dynasty. So if they want to extend it with Steph and you know Draymond's little defensive resurgence here, then like they have to make major changes. I don't think just saying. Okay, Draymond and Steph, you're going to be a year older, but so are Kaminga and Moody, and we're going to roll with it. I just think that's just not a that's not a real. Yeah, plan. I mean, it's it's kind of all internal development, I guess, is what you're hoping for. But the the tough thing with their cap situation as well is like Curry makes such an absurd amount of money that once you lose the Chris Paul contract off your books. And you lose the Clay Thompson con- tra- contract off your books, you can't replace that money really in, in any real way. It's not like you can swap forty million dollar contract for forty million dollar contract. Yeah, yeah, it's tough. The way the NBA is works is like you can go over the cap when you re-sign your own players, so then you can trade your players when you're over that cap. But once you are around the cap because you've lost the contracts, i.e., Clay or Chris. You can't just go over the cap to sign someone unless you have their bird rights. But I don't think we, they don't even have anyone who, with bird rights eligibility. This uh, well, they they thing. would have Chris's like bird right. rights because they acquired him via trade and Traded of course him, Clay's. Yeah. But but who is signed and trading yeah, Chris Paul? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. That's a, that's a tough. I I mean I guess that's like a small move they can make on the margins, like a, a sign and trade Chris Paul to a small you know eight million dollar contract, sign and trade him to San Antonio maybe for something but like do you really want like keldon johnson makes more than that so it wouldn't work straight up but let's say it did like would you even want keldon yeah johnson? yeah no i don't i don't know it definitely doesn't change your life but but what you're getting at is totally the the path it's like can you trade out cp3 for a starting level player and then can you get out clay for another starting level player 
And I think that would be a lot harder than you might have imagined last offseason. Yeah, it's it's it kind of feels like they waited a year too late on the clay. Decision. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. And I mean, that's what Bob Meyer said, though. He said, like, the reason I'm not the GM is like they have so many tough choices to make because it's the human element to their team. Right. You know, this is like this is year 10 of an amazing one of the best runs, if not the best run. For, all right. Second best run in NBA history. Yeah. You know I mean? Yeah. No, totally. Um, yeah, it's tough. And and then it's like you're still it's working tough. under the Steve Kerr system that, you know, one out of every eight players actually works in. Yeah, in the system that seems like it was propped up by having a massive shooting advantage that they don't have anymore. Mm-hmm. It, it, to me, it feels like they need to rebuild their team as a more standard, Steph-heavy, high pick-and-roll type modern NBA offense. Yeah, no, I, I'm so with you. And with a double big um, lineup that you can really... I think the the path forward f- for the Warriors is which they were kind of built like this before as well, but build around defense, have one of the best defenses in the league, and then just roll it out to Steph and say, do your magic, make us good enough on offense to get by. Yeah. Yeah, and then I guess they have a Wiggins decision too, because he's kind of been on again, off again. And, you know, I hate to bring up like, you know, whatever's happening off the court, but it is two seasons in a row where he's missing a lot of games for personal reasons. Yeah, well, and and I think the, the tough thing for the Warriors is like Wiggins is probably too unique of a player at this point with their tools to improve to give up on, even though he's so unreliable. It's just like, how do you if you want to contend in Steph's last couple of years and not make it this Kobe in like the late 20 teens situation, you probably have to keep Wiggins around and just hope that he figures his shit out. Yeah, I feel like it really might depend like how they lose, right? Because if it's a situation where the Warriors are Like, let's say they just get absolutely throttled by the Lakers in the play-in game. Like, they lose by 20. They can't contain AD. It looks like one of their playoff games against them from last year. Like, I don't know. I feel like they're they're kind of kind of have these tough choices. Or they maybe they're just like, you know what? Like, this team is just not built for the modern West, this giant defense heavy West. But maybe if they're the eighth seed and they have a really competitive series with the Timberwolves, they just try to upgrade on the margins. Yeah. 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 Either way, I just think they owe it to Steph to not tank or if they want to tank Blow it up yeah. and you know it hurts but like get rid of them get them out get them out of the building um okay where do you want to go next suns lakers clippers let's go to the lakers. okay lakers let's go to the lakers I, I i i i it's okay so the lakers are a weird one because blowing it up it feels like they've been chasing this third star the whole time but it feels like we are now seeing this version of this team that we expected to see all year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, eight and one in their last nine games. They they really seem to s- step it up. Um, I had the Lakers three on I this don't think list, they're catch- mainly just because of the coaching situation. And I've never been a Rob Palinka believer. Yeah, it feels like Palinka's untouchable. That's the weird thing about the Lakers. He's never, ever, it seems like you never see the Rob Palenka hot seat article, even though he 100% should be. So, you know, assuming the Lakers win this play-in game against the Warriors, and then, you know, let's say they get eight. Just for argument's sake, that's where they're slotted right now. They get eight. They got the Timberwolves. You know, that's not an easy series for the Lakers. The Timberwolves are big and physical. Like, again, I feel like that's one of those weird things where if they lose in six, seven, like... Maybe you run it back with the whole like, hey, we're going to be a higher seed next year if we have a real coach and Ham gets fired. But if it's ugly or they lose to the Warriors in the play in, I think they are going to go star hunting with these assets. How far does Ham need to go in the playoffs to keep him around? I know you would say not at all. You need to get him out of there. But how far do you think Genie Buss needs him to go in the playoffs to keep Darvin Ham around? I feel like Genie just needs him to make the playoffs. Yeah, probably. I mean, the thing is, last year's but, playoffs, everybody's talking about Darvin Ham like, oh, he might be like the next Ime Udoka. He's really got the ear of these guys. And then that has not shown at all this season. 
No. Well, he's starting to just play the lineups that work. I mean, that's the weird thing I've been, you know, I've been on this whole season with the Lakers. I'm like, they have all these lineups that are really good. They just don't use them. And then now they're finally like using them and they've been playing really well. And it's like, I don't know if he just keeps doing that. I guess you don't really need to get rid of it. Yeah. I feel like this Lakers team seems kind of easy to coach. <laughs> I mean, you've got take? like the biggest like basketball genius of all time sitting right there. Yeah, like from an X's and O's standpoint, you've got like two amazing ball handlers. Like D'Lo's an awesome catch and shoot, three point shooter. Anthony Davis is just a single game wrecker by himself. Like it just seems like just get the data, follow the data, and this team should go pretty far. Get JJ Redick in there. Maybe they I'm need too high, JJ. Though. Yeah. I don't know, but I'm with. I definitely think if it's a flame out early on, we're, we're gonna see them go star hunting in the off season and maybe. Handle yeah, I mean, especially with like the, the it's kind of like the perfect stars that the Lakers need are the ones that seem like they're available right now. Like you got Trey. We already talked about Donovan Mitchell, Dejounte Murray as well. Like kind of a mixed bag, and even a guy like Cat. Like, he's the kind of big, the rare kind of big that would actually fit next to an Anthony Davis really well. Um, And, I mean, they don't have the best assets in the world. But um, I I just, I feel like there's a lot kind of riding there. And then we haven't even talked about the LeBron of it all. I don't think LeBron's going to leave just because the of the great gap in money that the Lakers could pay LeBron. But, you know, he's a lame duck star right now. I think he's going to stay for one more year. I think next year is the last year. That's my guess. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It's weird to envision them going star hunting with how well d I know. Going. How much better? Like, what percentage like, is Donovan like Mitchell going to be better than d player right now. Okay, well, Donovan Mitchell is a story. I know, but it's like... Story. But, like, DeJounte Murray, like, I don't even know if that's necessarily better for this Lakers team. Like, straight up, the way D'Lo's playing, like, I, I don't know if I'd rather have DeJounte 44 points or 44 I, I'm shots. not saying Donovan Mitchell isn't leaps and bounds better than um, D'Angelo Russell. I'm just saying, like, is it going to be noticeable how much better in that ecosystem where LeBron has the ball so much? I don't know because I think if you because the way they structured the Rui plus D'Lo contract like Rui's kind of been the secret sauce to a lot of their better lineups and better like team identity so I don't know they're kind of stuck like I don't I don't they they they've oddly like they structured those two contracts to pair together to get that 40 million dollar player that Kyrie Irving type player but now those two guys have played too well to the point where you can't really get rid of them Yeah yeah no I I think if the Lakers don't get out of the first round they're kind of like the warriors in the sense that it, they're kind of locked into what they're doing but they have a little bit more flexibility but i i don't know i you know they could end up shooting themselves in the foot like the russell westbrook situation so easy i i have a bad feeling if they flame out if it's like timberwolves and four like i feel like they're gonna do the star hunting and i just don't know if that's that's what this team needs but yeah, I don't know if that's what this team needs either. A team that probably didn't need to go star hunting last offseason is uh, my Phoenix Suns, which I had number four on this list. Um, yeah, I mean, the the thing about the Suns is it's it's kind of they're kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place as well. There's not really very many moves to be made. Um, so I have a question. One. Is it even realistic for the Suns to be able to blow it up? Like, what does a Suns blow up look like? Are they going to trade Bradley Beal? Are they going to trade Kevin Durant? Like, that's why the Suns are weird. But two, like, how far do the Suns need to go to just confidently be like, yeah, this is the core we're rocking with next year? Because, like, I'd be scared if this team flames out and loses in the play-in or loses in the first round to the to any to the Thunder or the the if they lose to the thunder or the timberwolves in embarrassing fashion like i would be like what is the game plan here because durant's only getting older beal's always been an injury risk and like i don't know the the thing they're in a weird they're they're the game plan is you go to devin booker and you say devin what do you want us to do and then you do whatever devin booker says because that's really all you can do i mean you listen around on brad beal and if there's someone out there that's dying to acquire him, you talk to Brad about it. I doubt he's 
interested. And I'm saying this, Bradley Beal has been absolutely amazing for the Suns the last two games, but it's so inconsistent. And then, I don't know, there's always the Durant. Patrick, of, doesn't Bradley Beal still have a no trade clause? He though? does have a no trade clause. Like the, uh, the Suns, I, 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 it's almost like trading Durant's the only option. And I don't know, Beal's been great. Booker's been great. Durant's been great. But I think the one thing we've learned about the Suns team is it's just three very overlapping skill sets. Yeah, yeah. And, and I, I mean, I, I, I referenced the Rudy Gobert Timberwolves thing earlier. I think the Suns are a great candidate for a jump like that. Obviously, they have not had the cohesion this season. They have not gotten to play together as much as they would have liked. Um, I wonder about Frank Vogel. Like we do, Matt Ishbia has made a lot of very passionate decisions since he's become the Suns owner. And I realize that Frank mm -hmm. is only in his first year, but there have been many times throughout this season that it seemed like he just has not had the Suns ear as well as the fourth quarter woes. Who do you who do you blame? more than Frank Vogel for something like that. Like when it's so glaringly b bad, it has to be a scheme thing in my opinion. And then the one last guy that I, I think James Jones has done an amazing job with this roster, given the structure and the tools he's had. You know, I don't think he had very much say in the Kevin Durant or Bradley Beal moves. And he's pretty much filled out this roster as well as he could. But I think that that's another move that could happen for the Suns. He's not a Matt Ishbia hire. Um, who knows? Matt Ishbia might throw Isaiah Thomas in there and I'm going to be on fucking like life alert watch. But um, yeah, it's that that's why I didn't have the Suns above the Lakers is it just seems like there aren't many moves to be made to blow it up. I feel like the Suns are on like the hottest seat, but unlike the Lakers or unlike the Cavs or, you know, any of the other teams we've talked about, they don't have, um, they've got a heavy seat. They can't move yeah. it. Well, it's kind of like. It's too hot. It's like they, there's no water to douse <laughs> it with. It's like, because, you know, Grayson Allen has been so good for you guys. Like, I don't know if they're going to be able to resign hey, him. Matt Ishbia said they are going to blow through the second apron. So let's. Put your money where your mouth is, Matt, and extend this man because there is no other way to improve this team if you do not. Yeah, so Grayson Allen has like been shooting the highest like three point percentage in the NBA this year, which is a crazy, you know, crazy thing. Do they have? I don't know if they have bird rights. I don't. Are they? They do have sign? bird rights. Yeah, I think starting last week he became eligible for an extension. And I was kind of disheartened to see that they had not uh, done it immediately. But um, yeah, I mean, they have Royce O'Neal's bird rights. They have Grayson Allen's bird rights. Those guys are going to be so expensive with the second apron to maintain. But like, you have to do it if you you believe in this core and, and we're rolling it forward. Is there any world where they play out in the first round Losing four, losing five to Minnesota or OKC, and they trade KD. Yes, I, I think there is a world where that where that happens. I, I like what percentage would is there I give a it? Warriors, Suns swap. We can we can resurrect both teams with. Yeah, you know, I mean, hey, you look at the Warriors there. Like Draymond Green is a Michigan State guy. Um, and then I mean, I don't know. You you get a fucking Andrew Wiggins or maybe a Kaminga in there. Um, but it's, it's, I don't want to talk about it. It's scary. <laughs> okay. No, I'm well, let's, so I had the Suns in my, I, in my mental number two rankings. Um, I just feel like the Suns are ripe for, for a lot of chaos, a lot of discourse when, uh, whenever this. Oh, absolutely. Oh, they're going to get tongue lashed the second they are out by the national media. I just feel like this is Russell Westbrook on the Lakers year one and not year two where everything gets shuffled. Gets shuffled. Okay, so the, the number one team that is on the hot seat is the Clippers. But here's the weird thing with the Clippers. 
there was that like smoke that like Paul George might leave for Philly, but then it was like, ah, eh, Paul George isn't actually going to leave for Philly. He's going to stay with LA. I feel like the Clippers are, I, I don't want to say it, but I feel like they're, they are going to lose in round one. James Harden has been in playoff form for a little bit now, and <laughs> we're seeing playoff Harden. And it's ugly. Um, I I don't know. I just don't see them beating the Mavs, who's the five seed right now. Like, what do you do? Like, it, I, it's like the PG Kawhi things have failed. If they don't win that first round series, like the PG Kawhi pairings have failed experiment. Harden, are they gonna even? Are they even gonna bother to re-sign him? Like. They're in a weird spot because they need to build excitement for their new arena next year. So they're really incentivized to bring everybody back for the star power, even if they flame out. But, like, are these guys even stars if they can't compete in the first round of the playoffs? Yeah, man, it's tough. <laughs> I mean, they're, they've had three playoff series wins in the Kawhi PG era, which if you would have asked me in 1920, I would have told you they probably would have had three playoff series wins that year. Um, Ty Lu has had two playoff series wins in the four years he's been there. He has one year on his contract after this. Um, maybe that's the place they look, even though I think that would be kind of insane to fire Ty Lu. That kind of shit happens sometimes with coaches. Um, yeah, it's and, and then yeah, James Harden and, and Paul George are free agents. Maybe that's a uh maybe that's a KD place. I don't know. Um some kind of Paul George uh KD I swap. I I don't think that's even legal. I don't think the Suns or the uh Clippers can do sign in trades because they're both above the second apron. Like if Harden flames out like he did you know, Harden had such a weird playoff with Philly because he had some awesome games in that Celtics series, but he also had some real stinkers. Like, but if it's just like he's just horrible in the first round for them this year, like what do they do? do they just no, let him you go? have to resign him. You have you you gave up way too much. You already locked in uh Kawhi. Like I guess, but what's the point of locking in these guys if they can't even win? I don't like. I don't know. I, I, the Clippers are in such a bad and spot. It's the same thing that you're hoping for every year. In you're hoping Kawhi can be that Toronto 2019 Kawhi, and we saw that in flashes last postseason. He was amazing last postseason in the one and a half game that he played. But uh, you're going to need a lot more than that. And yeah, it, it will be a, a, a tough matchup. Th- there's a, a real scenario that they could even fall in the play in, into the play in at this point. They got absolutely roundhouse kicked by the Kings last night. Yeah, they're playing the Nuggets. And they have tomorrow. two more games against um, the Suns. Oh my god! Yeah, and that's the thing. If they're that, that's why that's why they're the hardest team to gauge on this hot seat because right they should they, they sh- there's no team that should have a hotter seat than this team because this is like year four or five of this duo that has accomplished nothing. Um, yeah, and but yet they have a new arena coming next year. They want to sell tickets for the new arena. They want to build excitement. They want to compete with the Lakers, and it's just I don't know. I mean, like if this if this if this postseason we walk away and we're like, wow, the Lakers, because they avoided Denver, got back to the conference finals. They still lost. They sw- they got they got that another competitive sweep to Denver, but they made it. And the Clippers losing the first round to the Mavericks, we're all going to be like, oh, my God, these guys are a joke. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's kind of the sentiment right now already. And, and, and not only. D- but like, that's my thing is if you're trying to sell tickets, do you want to bring the clown show back? <laughs> I don't, that's why it's weird with them. Like, do you want to bring all the clowns back to the circus or do you want to just not be a circus anymore? <laughs> like, I don't know. I feel like <laughs> at, at least people come and watch the circus uh, opposed to, uh, opposed oh to like a, a kindergarten classroom of, of just like rookies and two way guys. But, um, yeah, it's tough. Like, you know what my favorite thing in LA is when I, you know, you know, that road, I forget what it is. You guys know that road, it kind of goes through Culver city. It goes through like the mountains. It's not a freeway. It's just like a big, long, fast road in the middle of LA. And it's, it's like covered in like street lights over spotlights. 
you need stars, and we got two of them. The Clippers have like super corny. I, I feel like that's all, all over Van Nuys LA for as those well. of you who. Yeah, all over like parts of like West LA is like really cringy Clippers branding stuff, and the Lakers don't do any of that anywhere. It's like <laughs> Apple. You don't. You just don't need. You don't need any uh, advertising. Yeah, you don't. They don't need to. It's it's bad. I don't know, man. But I, maybe LA should be what they change. <laughs> Go to San Diego. Like just, I know you built a new stadium, but it's go time with to leave, your Clippers. your G League team to San Diego. <laughs> Balmer, go to go to Seattle, yeah. Balmer. That's where you like got your bones, anyways. But yeah, I mean, Lawrence Frank, their GM, <laughs> has been a- around since seventeen eighteen. He's done basically nothing. Ty Lu has been around since freaking twenty 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 one. He's done basically nothing. Um, it's just like I could see every level of this franchise turning over or that you just like get petrified in the same way that we've been talking about the Suns and the warriors of just like we it's like too much of a sunk cost at this point okay question though i know we just dunked on the clippers a lot but they do have so many good players they have such a good bench clippers win against the mavs let's say in six they lose to either minnesota or they lose to denver in five or six what do you do then? You just bring everybody back? Because that's the weird thing. I just feel like you can't just bring everybody back when most of them are very old and be like, all right, you're a year older. Let's run it back. That's the weird thing, right? Like what what happens to the Clippers if they have a semi-successful? I feel like you got to run it back. Anything short of disaster, I think you have to run it back, unfortunately. Is that just but is that because of the new stadium? Like if the new stadium wasn't a factor, it's because of feel? Kawhi. It's because of the contract that they signed Kawhi to. They have Kawhi under contract for the next three years. And they're paying him a, a lot of money. I just feel they're they're paying him almost fifty million dollars a year. I just feel like you 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 can't have that big of a number on your books and just, you know, punt on the rest of your roster. Patrick, I'm ready. are you ready? Sign and trade Paul George to the to Yeah, the I knew you were going to say this. For Donovan Mitchell. Well, I mean, one, it, it helps diversify the skill set of both teams. Because it, 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 I think Paul George and Kawhi have a lot of the same issues the Suns have, where it's like, in theory, two wings who are great solo soft creators, shot creators who can play great defense or a great fit together. But in reality, we just see redundant skill sets are not always the best. Yeah, no, I like it. I like it. Don't get me wrong. I, 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 uh, I think Donovan Mitchell would be a huge come up for them. And then you just, I don't know, I guess you just don't resign James Harden or you do I I mean I guess it doesn't really matter you sign and trade him to I don't know anywhere that I don't, I don't know where I don't know who wants Harden uh, it, like if he just plays the way he's been playing lately I just don't know what he looks like like what is his take image? the minimum come down to Phoenix be where you went to college be with your best buddy KD and, and be by Scottsdale you can just party every night James it'll be great you can even go to Tempe party with party with the ASU kids. Um, no, I I have no idea where you go if you're James Harden. I don't know. Take a small contract, go to Houston if they even want you. I don't know. Go to Atlanta. I feel like that'd be a oh, that's a cultural fit a for a, <laughs> for his lifestyle. <laughs> Max is saying no. Max is <laughs> Max is shaking his head vigorously right now. The amount of chicken wings and strip club visits that <laughs> would just the graph would just go up. Uh, Lou Will's coming out of retirement to be on that Hawks roster. So to recap the hot seats, we both think the Clippers have the hottest seat. I think the Suns have the second hottest seat. You think the Lakers have the second hottest seat? Vice versa. I got the Cavs. Cavs, oh, Cavs number, number two. two. Okay. Well, we either way, we have Clippers, Suns, Lakers, Warriors. And then in the East, we've got the Cavaliers, Sixers, or no, Cavaliers, Bucks, and Celtics. Celtics. Celtics asterisk as we just truly don't believe they flame out without yeah. injury. In case of emergency. The, I, I do have one team that I had kind of in my seventh spot 
that I we haven't talked about yet, and that's the Pelicans. I think there could be room there for like a hot seat, especially if they really fumble the rest of the season and fall into the play play in. Um, I I don't know that Willie Green has built that kind of rapport yet to have a lot of job security. I think Brandon Ingram is ripe to be on the outs there. And then um, there's the David Griffin factor of, I think he's done a generally good job, but the results just aren't there. Yeah, I would, I would. What do you think about the I think Griff is pretty safe. I would be pretty shocked if they moved on from Griff. I guess it's tough. So right now the Pels are 45 and 31. Kings at seven are also 31 losses. Suns at eight are 31 losses. So, I mean, there is a real chance this team could have, you know, finished probably as low as eight and as high as five. So it's just really hard to project them. If the playoffs happen today, they're playing OKC, which I, I think is I think that is what's going to end up happening. And I feel like that's going to be a competitive series. But if they get swept in a non-competitive series, then yeah, I think you're going to start seeing like the BI trade. Um, it feels like if they get swept, BI not playing well would probably be a reason that happens. Yeah, well, and the, honestly, they haven't been playing well in the last their last couple of games because BI hasn't yeah. been there. Um, it's it's like a weird thing having that like they rely on him so much, but also the fit is just not there. Yeah, they're they're a weird team, but I, I mean, I'm still I still like them. I I would be cautious to make too much of a rash decision with them because this is the first year they've actually gotten like a good amount of games played out of Zion and it took Zion over half the year just to get into shape. So I guess if I'm then I'm just being real. You know what I mean? Like, like, (laughs) no, you're right. I was the Pels. I would be very okay being a little cautious. But, you know, me and you did a deep dive on the Pels a couple weeks ago and it's they're young, but they're young ish. They're all like 23, 24, 25. They're not mm-hmm. 22. So that's not that that's the scary thing. If you are to lose to OKC, it's like, OK, we lost to the three seed, but the three seed is an average age of 21 and we're an average age of 24. So like, what is our pathway to ever surpassing OKC? And I think that's how they need to think if that's how that series goes. And they're low key going to get really expensive soon. Like Herb Jones is a guy they just kind of paid, but on a shorter contract. Um, Dyson Daniels, they're going to have to pay soon. Jonas Valanciunas, I think, is going up this year. So if they want to keep him, they're going to have to do some kind of contract there. Uh, Trey Murphy has been awesome. They're going to have to pay him. Um, that's the thing with these these teams that hoard assets like the Thunder and the Pels. Like they get really, really expensive kind of all at once. Yeah, that's true. All right, uh, shall we get to Hot Streak Shooting Slump? Let's do it. All right. What about you? Are you on a hot streak or are you in a shooting slump? I, I'm on a hot streak. I'm on a hot streak. Had a had a very big week at work last week. A lot of work, but um, I was planning this big party and it went really, really well. So I was happy with that. Had the day off today, which was very, very nice. Just got to kind of simmer in the chaos of the nba and get ready for this pod and um as i look over to see oh the the suns are doing their fourth quarter thing a little bit but uh it looks like we 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 might be able to hold on 93 to 109 right now with five minutes left i think the the voicemail that ishbia left was scathing enough that the suns oh my god i know (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I can't say that I'm surprised at all by that uh, that voicemail. Um, there's pretty much all billionaires are billionaires because they're kind of assholes. But uh, yeah, that that will be interesting. I'm excited to see more information about that whole potential like mortgage fraud of the century case. Um, yeah. How is your week, Ben James? <laughs> Um, I'm on a hot streak, you know, the aforementioned party you put together, I happened to attend and I had a great time. Um, just got my film photos back. I love getting my disposable photos back. That almost always leads to a hot streak week. Um, I'm in Minnesota. Yesterday I was in Washington, DC. I am doing a video where I am going to the NBA's three lowest rated stadiums. And I have to say, I've very much enjoyed my time at the Capital One Center and the Target Center. Um, have we talked about, um, the Minnesota 
experience at all yet on this pod? I can't remember. Not really. So I, moments before coming on the pod, I just finished a Timberwolves game. They won by 48 points over the Toronto Raptors, who are just not a good basketball team. It's like Emmanuel. Max Kipley is beaming and- right now. Max, the Timberwolves are awesome. Ant regained his three-point shot. He was like on a 0 of 22 streak, I think, but he hit a lot of threes today. Nas Reed, that dude is good, man. That dude it's is really, really, really good. My only Timberwolves critique, because in person, it's it's even more glaring than it is on TV. Rudy Gobert fucking sucks on offense, dude. The amount of rebounds that he grabs and immediately loses is staggering um he had two missed dunks today yeah i don't know i'm a, I, i'm just how are you feeling on rudy like i'm a, i'm just like i'm kind of worried man like seeing it in person it's clunky i mean it's just that thing of like you know when he's on the court we are the number one defense in the league and when he's not we are not so it's like i just have to give him credit where for that but yeah i mean other than like cleaning up shots this man dude like it it is crazy like i swear he there's like 12 rebounds he just lost because he just doesn't have like i don't know if it's like bad but then he also had a one-handed put back dunk so i'm like okay well clearly he's got coordination like i don't know there's something about him man that's just off-putting dude honestly whenever i see him like like some possessions he'll like advance the ball up the court and i'm just like i know he 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 actually had a uh Got a defensive rebound, took one dribble. The guy reached. He behind the back crossover, blew past the guy, and I was like, "Okay, Rudy." Uh, but then he passed it up. Wow! But it was it was it like it looked like we were about to get like an all time Rudy highlight. But no, Timberwolves fans, I got to give a shout out to Timberwolves fans, bro. <laughs> They're so loud. Even when the game was like a fifty point blowout, people were still cheering like crazy. Um, you guys want to guess what the loudest moment of the game was? I I I I couldn't no, if it was I when tried. No, Luca Garza entered the game. The stadium went ballistic, and then Luca Garza proceeded to score five straight points, and it was pandemonium in there. Um, despite the fact that yes, you guys were up by forty-five points, it was insane. I honestly haven't been to an NBA arena like that. Wizards fans, I think I talked about it earlier. You know, the game I went to is mostly Bucks fans. L- the Wizards are tanking. I get it. Wizards fans were a lot of fun. Good nature trash talking to me. I was wearing a Bucks jersey. People were like, how long's your flight back to Milwaukee? And I was like, joke's on you. I'm just a bandwagon Giannis fan, so I don't have to go anywhere. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I apparently those stadiums were supposed to suck. They were both pretty good. I, I'm, the one thing I don't like about both of these stadiums, though, I have to say, they don't have like a plaza area. It's kind of weird. Like when I go to the Heat Stadium, they have a big open area in front of the stadium. When I go to the you know, the Lakers stadium, they have that area where all the statues are. It's kind of like the, the I don't know. The, the, it's just like both Capital One and Target Center. There's all of a sudden you're in the you're in the urban area of the city. And then, oh, there's a stadium, but it looks like it just looks like another building. There are um, are different uh, other arenas around those arenas or no? Yeah. So I found out the Twins baseball stadium is like right next to the Target Center. Gotcha. Gotcha. Maybe that's why. Um, I, I, I just and it's weird. They put the statue. There's a there's a George Mikan statue inside the arena, but I idiotically didn't go inside at first. So I saw a statue of the Target dog, and I made a I made a note that the Target dog has a retired uh, player before the Timberwolves. That's do. amazing. <laughs> I, I love that the only statue at the Timberwolves arena is a Lakers <laughs> player. There is a, uh, there's two things in the Timberwolves Arena that I think are really funny. So the Timberwolves Arena, it is very old. It's like old mortar, old brick, you know, old stone. And then there's one wall that looks like it's made out of modern materials. And it just is a 50 cent wall. There's just two framed photos, two like framed photos of 50 cent. And uh, I took a photo of it. What does it say in the middle? I could not believe it. I had to take a picture. Um, but... <laughs> On this week of all, I took it on my my glasses. I have these glasses that can record videos and take photos. But yeah, there's just a 50 cent wall uh, on the 200 level section. That's kind of interesting. And then there is a wall of Minneapolis Lakers memorabilia and all that stuff. I mean, one of my oldest takes is that I believe that all of the Minneapolis Lakers banners and championships and players should be attributed 
to the Timberwolves because I feel that you win championships for your city, not for your owner, because that constantly changes. But that's just me. That's just me. Well, you know, in some teams' case, Patrick, the city also constantly changes. Uh, that is true. That That, that is true. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, no, great, great time. Tomorrow I'm going to Houston. I, I I don't know why my gut is telling me Houston will not be a good stadium. I have been to the Houston Stadium before, and I thought it was actually really. How are the nice. seats? I was reading they're like cloth seats or something like that. Uh, I don't rem- You know, this was a number of years ago. I don't remember the seats specifically, but I just remember it, it had a very nice aesthetic, and it was like um, they handed out James Harden tr- like custom trolley gummy bears that were shaped like oh that's cool beard i got oh you guys are gonna be jealous i got a reusable wizard's water bottle uh from the capital one center wow (laughs) that 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 is a great great uh gift yeah max how was your week odd streak slump i'm gonna go soft streak triple streak um yeah nothing too crazy but uh you know just been feeling good picking up some extra work gigs um you know, uh, you know, cooked myself a nice dinner last night. Um, watched Die Hard three. Shout out Hell Die yeah. Hard three. That movie slaps. If Is that the one with it, Justin Long? It's the one with Samuel L. Jackson. Where like, okay, ja- true, true, true. Yeah, he's like his sidekick in the movie, and it rips. So if you're looking for a good action movie to throw on, I recommend Die Hard with a Vengeance. Um, but uh, yeah, no, I'm feeling good. Good vibes all around. Uh, my T Wolves are. Just cleaning up the, mm-hmm. the shit teams. Uh, I mean, the Rockets are not a shit team, but you know what I mean. They're 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 do, just doing do, what they got to do. Of business. The stretch and then who needs cat? <laughs> who needs cat? Honestly, cat is on watch right now. Um, Ewing theory is is the U- Ewing theory committee is attending every single Timberwolves game. At I this don't point, agree. Bro. I I I think the the I, I mean I just watched them win by fifty, but. I feel like Cat coming back is going to be a nice welcome addition. No, I mean, yeah, I I think they will definitely need him in the playoffs. For sure, for sure. Because um, as if you know anything, um, the end of the season is when things like uh, Rudy Gobert and Kyle Anderson getting into a fist fight happen, and Jaden McDaniel's breaking his hand because he punched a wall happening, and. Um, you know, all sorts of fun things could still happen in the next two weeks. So yeah, you know, uh, Max, we're we're about to have like a podcast war here because the, your Wolves are playing Patrick's Suns twice. They're playing the Lakers once. It's time for foul trouble, yep. civil war. It's gonna get it's gonna get messy, bro. Lines are gonna be drawn. <laughs> so definitely, definitely stay tuned. Uh, make sure to subscribe to the podcast feed for Foul Trouble Civil War. Foul Trouble Civil War. All right. We'll catch you guys on mo- or Monday. Yes. Sorry. It is late. I'm on no sleep. I have to get up at like five in the morning. So yay me. I ha- you got I have this. To go to We're Houston. so proud of you. Thank you guys Peace. for listening. <laughs>